everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde, and today we are hitting on the Chicago Bears' most recent news, along with NFL news about the NFL salary cap. I am joined alongside my co-host, London Beth, and we have a lot to go over today. Allen Robinson, Kyle Long, Russell Westbrook, Russell Westbrook, and more potential moves. We got it all for you today, so stay tuned. London, thank you for joining me again, as always. Um, before we begin... Big disclaimer for everyone is that, again, the big news this morning was that the NFL announced that the salary cap this upcoming season is going to be $182.5 million, $17 million less than last year, which you don't see many decreases like ever in regards to the salary cap. So a lot of teams are making a lot of moves and the Chicago Bears are going to be right in that mix. So London, let's get right into it. Allen Robinson franchise tag has till July 15th to make a long-term deal with the Chicago Bears. First initial reaction to this news. So my first initial reaction was kind of exactly like Alan Robinson and all his tweets that he liked. Um, I, I mean, he wasn't too happy. I wasn't too happy about it. I, I know that he's looking for somewhere in the range of like 20 million a year. I understand that. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for a receiver. Um, we are getting them. I think it's around 17 to 18 million on the franchise tag. Uh, I'm happy he's still going to be around. I think he's probably the only piece on offense other than maybe our young offensive line and David Montgomery, and maybe the potential of uh, Darnell Mooney uh, that will bring a quarterback to want to come to Chicago. Uh, the franchise tag is tough though. I mean, I know why players hate it, you know, and it just, it hurts and it's tough because now it's like, is he going to, is he going to just, you know, uh, Stefan digs us. And a lot of my friends were messaging me last night who are Vikings fans. I'll let you know who are huge Vikings fans and they don't care about digs anymore because they got Justin Jefferson, but they were all just, you know, harassing me on our group chats. And they're like, he's going to Stefan digs you. He's going to Stefan digs you. Like you made fun of us and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, a year ago, and he's going to do the same exact thing. And I contemplated it. I stayed up till like three o'clock in the morning thinking about it. And I'm like, it's going to happen and it's going to hurt just as bad. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think that, um, you know, Robinson didn't deserve that. Like you were kind of saying that the man deserved, you know, this contract before the season even began, Co the COVID season even began. And, you know, we, we as fans do not know as much as the NFL knows. Could the owners, could the GMs have known that this kind of situation was coming with a decreased cap? Who knows? What really drives me crazy is that this cap news came after franchise tags went out. So Ryan Pace sits there and goes, okay, we got our guy for another, at least another year. I still have some time to move around players, make a contract happen. And then Roger Dell comes in and goes, nope, you have to move even more players in order to keep your stars. So I think that, you know, in, in retrospect, what the Bears should do with Robinson at this point is I say we get, I say we trade him. I say that we trade Allen Robinson, get some good picks, whether that be, you know, I think he's worth a first in my opinion, being as elite of a receiver as he is. Um, could we get a second and third? No doubt we could get a second and a third. That's great. Could we use that as draft capital then to move up? Sure. Does that help our cap? Absolutely. Robinson doesn't want to be here. If he doesn't want to be here, let's go get assets that do want to be here. Then you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's kind of my take. And you can't, and like you said, $20 million is a lot of money for any player, especially a wide receiver. And that's starting to become the trend. First, it was quarterbacks making crazy money. Then suddenly you got guys like Khalil Mack and Aaron Donald who are making, you know, crazy money on the defensive side of the ball. Now you have wide receivers getting quarterback NFL money. It's, it's going to become too much. And I think that you can't have a wide receiver who doesn't even want to be there be one ninth of your entire salary cap. So I'm saying we trade him for picks, throw him in the Russell Wilson deal. I don't care. Somehow I'll do it. But I do not think that he's going to be on the Chicago Bears uh, even come before the draft. It's just not going to happen. London, your thoughts. I agree with you. Um, I think I think trading them and loading up for picks is exactly what we should do. Um, the problem with wide receivers in the NFL is there's three positions in the NFL, and I'll say this probably a couple of times in this podcast that are the most important. Quarterback, duh. <laughs> Someone to protect that quarterback, so a left tackle, a really solid left tackle or a right tackle, okay. 
and then someone to get after the quarterback, Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald, those kind of players. Those are the three most important positions on an NFL team in today's day and age. And the problem is, is if you're going to pay a wide receiver, then what are we going to do later down the road? You know, Jalen Johnson is a, just an absolute lockdown corner. We don't have the money for him. Roquan's going to want a contract. We don't got the money for him. Um, the other thing is, is with trading and grabbing those picks for Allen Robinson, I'm okay with that because I'd rather draft receivers. And then right. the, since 2000, I'll give you a little statistic here I looked up. Since 2017, and I went through, so that's for the last four or five drafts, okay, there's been at least, bare minimum, five starting wide receivers drafted in the top five rounds, okay? Going back from in 2017, you had like uh, a God, you had a Godwin, you had Cooper Cup, you had uh, Galladay who just hit free agency, 2018, you had DJ Moore, Calvin Ridley, DJ Chark. 19, you had AJ Brown, DK, or DK Metcalf, uh, McLaurin, who was drafted way later. 2020, you had an absolute phenomenal wide receiver draft. 2021, this draft coming up is deep as heck at wide receiver. And <laughs> I feel like these NFL drafts are only getting deeper at wide receiver. So paying someone like Allen Robinson, who I think is a very, very good game manager receiver, great possession catcher can get you those, you know, third and five yard, you know, third and five catches is awesome. Is he going to take the top off? Is he a game changer? Is he going to do things like Justin Jefferson at 19, 20 years old? No. no. So I agree. I, I say, I say you have to trade him. And honestly, maybe the Seattle Seahawks would want him. Yeah. And the other, so, I mean, just imagine that lineup, DK Metcalf, Allen Robinson, uh, who they have another guy out there. I'm I like it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a three headed monster right there. And, mm -hmm. you know, you throw, and that's kind of like what I'm saying when we get down to the Russell Wilson information, I kind of, this is, you know, I guess I'll just say my ideal trade now, but you, you give Allen Robinson you give them a three-headed monster. On top of it, you're giving up our first-round pick. They trade their first-round pick and our first-round pick into the top five and get a young, talented quarterback like Zach Wilson with a three-headed monster in Seattle. Pete Carroll is going to be laughing. He's like, yeah, I had one of the elites, but I have a guy that could be elite coming up soon. So I'm totally with you. And kind of like you said, why, the wide receiver position in the NFL is very easily replaceable. I mean, you can get a guy off the practice squad and he can give you a good, a decent season at wide receiver. Yeah. A Devin Aroma should do when he was on the bears was a, was a beast. Well, who was that guy in the Eagles like this year? Who, who was on like the Packers practice squad, went to the Eagles few, 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 few cam or something. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. He became a beast. yeah Tim Park or Tim, uh, uh, Tim, Patrick on the Denver Broncos. These guys are practice squad players who almost had thousand yard years. Yeah. And Allen Robinson's a big name. He's done impressive things with no quarterback, by the way, Allen Robinson is his most established quarterback of all time was Blake Bortles. If that makes, if that makes fans go like, how is this guy this good with no quarterback? Sure. Is he Calvin Johnson? No, I love Allen Robinson, but if he's going to have this attitude if he's going to want crazy amount of money when we're trying to go out and get a quarterback that's going to throw to him and he's going to go, I still want to get paid. Fine. You don't want to win championships. The bears team right now is a, like two or three pieces away from being a true contender in my, in my opinion. Yeah. And, go, you know, going off that really quick. Yeah. Uh, Colin Coward, one of my favorite sports uh, talk show people talked about that is he literally has referenced this in the past two or three years since we had that great 12 and four thing is the bears are the number one sleeping giant of the NFL. He literally yes. talks about it. He goes, they are probably a quarterback and maybe one other position away from being absolutely dominant. And it just, it stinks that we're sitting there because we're like such a giant, but we're sleeping. So we're just like, you know, Stuck here. I, think, <laughs> I know you're totally right. And I think that last year was the last opportunity the bears had to be the dominant team that they were back in 2018. And sure. We had Vic Fangio and we all know that I have a hard on for Vic Fangio. I mean, that dude is the, the godfather of defenses. I love that guy. And we had Chuck Pagano who did whatever, but the bears have a talented roster at the end of the day. And sure. They are missing all the key pieces. They're missing a key left tackle, like you said. They're missing an elite quarterback. 
but sure they have an edge because the bears always have an edge the bears always have a linebacker <laughs> you know it's it's just what the bears do so overall we're going to get more into moves later. The Bears are a sleeping giant, though, no doubt about it. But London and I are both saying, Al Robinson, pack your bags. You're getting traded for a different pick. Thank you for the fun years. We're happy we were able to prove that your career could not change because of your ACL injury. But it's time to, it's time to take off the orange and blue and go elsewhere. Next topic, speaking of putting on the orange and blue, Kyle Long is returning to the NFL after taking a gap year. He was an analyst. Uh, he got his feet wet, you know, he, and he was good at it too, but Kyle Long has decided to come back to the NFL per his brother. And then Kyle Long conferred to himself on Twitter. He's healthy. He's in the best shape of his life. He's never felt better. And that's something super exciting for Kyle Long, but the bears let go of his contract. He it, becoming unretired and having no contract. He is a free agent. And obviously he didn't know about the news about this cap. And looking at almost every single team in the NFL minus like three, I think it's like five, three or five of them are able to actually afford and make big splashes this year. All these teams are just like, how are we going to do this now? Kyle Long, I personally think that he made the right choice coming back. He's not going to get big money. He's got to prove that he can play and not get injured. I and I know London and I kind of talked about this on Twitter, but his comments last year about the organization, about Matt Nagy, about the front office, and you know him kind of quitting on the team, I understand where he's coming from as a player because he went, he was the beginning of a rebuild, went through decent teams, went back in a rebuild, then had a good season, and then was and then his body was all beat up because he was the only guy on that offensive line for a very long time. Okay. That's that's kind of my standpoint. And I kind of, I want the bears to bring him back, but where are they going to put him is the question. If they're just bringing him in to be a leader, resign Cordell Patterson for that. Re make sure that Akeem Hicks doesn't leave. We don't need another leader. And a lot of these guys don't even know. I mean, some of the, most of these guys do know Kyle Long because of 2018, but you're going to get a new quarterback. You have new wide receivers. Allen Robinson might be gone. You know, I don't know. London, I want to hear your take on why you don't want Kyle Long to come back to Chicago Bears. Listen, I loved Kyle Long coming out of college, okay? Out of Oregon, he was a stud. He's 6'7", 300 pounds, comes from a predominant family, goes on an offensive line, is immediately day one the best offensive lineman we have. Day one, hands down, you know, through the Jay Cutler years, all that kind of stuff was an absolute just mean like beast of a human being <laughs> yeah then the whole body kind of set in where he's taking the beatings we don't have a great line you know we're just running the ball constantly he's throwing his body at these guys slowly starting to deteriorate still being the leader that he was in the locker room the thing that killed me and i know you brought it up earlier but maybe it hits me a little harder than than you uh nick is when he was leaving, just the comments he made and him now then coming on to the score and talking about the remorse of those comments, I just don't think it fits our locker room anymore. The leadership in our locker room is Roquan Smith. The leadership in our locker room, you know, uh, is, you know, Allen Robinson, unless he leaves, you know, um, it's, you know, David Montgomery starting to get a voice, you know, I know, I know I've heard, you know, Cody, um has a you know Cody Whitehair has a huge voice in our locker room you know like David or uh Danny Trevathan you know what I mean like some of even yeah. the younger guys have stepped up and started to give a voice I don't think Kyle Long fits anymore and honestly I don't even know what he'll play or be like I've been yeah. seeing him getting in shape he's all over Twitter and Kyle please don't like at me and say that I'm just a Kyle Long hater and all that kind of stuff because I'm not I loved you I just don't think in today's NFL right now where you're out for a while I and mean, look what happened with Jason Witten he went out kind of did his own thing kept his body right came back wasn't the same player nope. I mean unless you're a transcendent I would say like Adrian Peterson-esque player when you leave and come back I just I, I, I don't think I can really name a player that had a phenomenal career in the past five years that left the NFL and came back yeah. and still did well and we just, honestly, I don't even know if he comes back and does really well and wants more money. We can't afford it. You yeah. know, we just can't, we can't afford it. So 
I'm out on Kyle Long. Um, I really hope that he honestly, I hope he signs with the Patriots. I, I could see that being a really good place for him to go. Um, you know, I don't think he wants to go to the Jets who have money. Maybe the Jaguars with Urban Meyer. Um, I, you know, I hope that he gets on a team. I just don't want him back in the Bears organization. Fair point. Fair point. Well, Kyle Long also said that he has no hate towards Bears fans that were hating on anything. So, and he put that in a tweet yesterday. So, I don't think I'll get too mad at you. Again, Kyle Long, great guy, great memories on the Bears. London's not in for Kyle Long coming back. I'm in for Kyle Long coming back if it's for the right price. Uh, And also, Kyle Long, I went to Deerfield High School. I know that you got kicked off the turf field because you were working out on it and it was a risk. That was bullshit. So I'm going with that. And by the way, I went to Deerfield High School. Kyle Long, that was bullshit. I hope you still think that's bullshit and gave, you know, screw our athletic director in that time. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever the athletic director is, someone, someone get his contact information and, and like just email him, just be like, you really messed up. I don't even think he's there anymore. I don't even think he's there anymore. Nothing against, nothing against him. Screw your decision of taking Kyle Long off the field. But anyway, <laughs> um, Russell Wilson, elephant in the room. Let's get through the, Let's get through this one. Russell Wilson, bears are nothing. The Saints are out. They, they don't have the cap. The Bears don't have the cap. The Saints really don't have the cap. Raiders are sticking with Derek Carr. I mean, the, unless they trade Carr for Wilson and give the Seahawks a bunch of money and take on a bunch of money, not happening. And the Raiders don't have money. Broncos, not happening. Don't see it happening. It's not going to go. Um, that leaves. Who else? He's not going to Carolina. That's, that's not happening. There's no way that Russell Wilson's going to Carolina. If anyone's going to Carolina, it's a Sean Watson, and I still don't think that's going to happen. The Bears are the only people left on Wilson's list. He is teasing Bears fans, posting, wearing blue. Obviously, the Seahawks have blue, but on his thing, he was wearing bear blue today. I think that, you know, it's going to cost an arm and a leg to get Russell Wilson to the Chicago Bears, but we need him. He's going to, he would instantly be the greatest quarterback in Bears history, hands down, walking into House Hall. Actually, still being in Seattle, he would still be the greatest Bears quarterback of all time. But what's it going to take to trade him? It's going to cost an arm and a leg. And this is, this is the, the perfect, in a perfect world, this is the perfect trade that I'd want. Hit on it earlier, but this is what I'm going to say. 2021 first round pick. 2022 first round pick. Second round pick in 2023. Allen Robinson and Kyle Fuller. I think that that is a very strong trade for the Seattle Seahawks, because you're getting two first round picks. I know people are saying you got to go in three, but you're getting Allen Robinson, a top five wide receiver, Kyle Fuller, a top five corner. So you're helping your offense and your defense, and you're getting draft picks that you're able to draft up into the first round, which is, which we have a very talented top 10 quarterback class this year, maybe top five. I would say there's 10 good quarterbacks, five great rookie quarterbacks in this draft. I say and then the Bears in return, they get Russell Wilson in a, in a second round this year. I think that's a fair trade. Good for caps on both sides, considering Russell Wilson's getting stupid money, but he's getting money he deserves. For the Bears, you're getting rid of $40 million out of the gate. So you're actually gaining on the cap. Seattle can move guys around. Seattle's getting rid of one of their best corners in Griffin, I believe. Or he's hitting free agency. They want to retain him. I don't know. That is my initial reaction. London, perfect trade world. Or what would you give up for Russell Wilson? <laughs> I'm going to be the most optimistic and, and bear loving person in this little segment right here and just say, hands down, you give away anybody that they want. Oh. You give away anybody. Okay. I'm saying, I don't care if they call. And I, I know we were, I was talking about a little bit of this. We have a little Twitter group with a bunch of random Chicago fans. I was telling them, listen, you can take Bulls players. You could take Cubs players. You can take White Sox players. You could take Blackhawks players. If they want to start, um, you know, the Seattle Supersonics again, <laughs> they want the entire Bulls roster. They can take everybody to get Bring Russell Wilson. the here. jerseys, baby. They, everybody. They can take everything. They can take, they can take the entire Bulls organization in Seattle if they'll give us Russell Wilson. Um, anyway, but realistically, I just I don't think there's a single person on our team that we shouldn't entertain trading. 
And the reason why I say that is I was I was I was looking a little bit at some trade stuff uh, before we started this. And, you know, like Pete Carroll loves really good running backs. They're not signing Carson, um, Chris Carson, I think. And so they're like, oh, maybe David Montgomery. Goodbye. See you, David Montgomery. Love you, but goodbye. Wow. You know, uh, Tyree Cohen, you know, totally fine with that trade. Uh, I don't think, honestly, I really don't think there's a single player on our team that we wouldn't trade. Now, players that they probably don't need is different. They probably don't need Roquan Smith. They still have Bobby Wagner. You know, they probably don't need, uh, you know, I would say like a second or slot receiver. They have Tyler Lockett. You know what I mean? Like there's some positions that the Seahawks just don't need, but I don't think there's a player on our team that we can't get rid of. I think I, I love your trade. I think a first round in the next two years, um, a second, second or third round in the third year, um, I think Allen Robertson by, I think Kyle Fuller is almost a must that we probably will have to trade him. They had Quinn and Dunbar that they got from Washington. Um, and I know they're not really re-signing Griffin. They got Quinn and Dunbar. He was kind of, he was really, really good at the Redskins. Kind of a bust last year, got burned a lot. Um, and I know they love good secondary there. Uh, so I think Kyle Fuller's a must trade. I'm okay with it. I could see Akeem Hicks. They love, like they need a D line. Have They've struggled with not having a D line since probably the Legion of Boom. Uh, and, and he would definitely um, sure that up. So I would say I'm going two first round picks, Akeem Hicks and Kyle Fuller. Um, I don't think they take Allen Robinson because they got some good receivers. Let me, so let me ask you this. You get, would you rather trade Hicks or Goldman? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, Cause everyone sleeps on Goldman cause he didn't play this year. He didn't play. Yeah. yeah. I would say, I would say they personally would probably want Eddie Goldman more because he's cheaper, younger, and has a ton of upside and showed really, really good um, production. I would rather trade Akeem Hicks just because he's older, more expensive. Um, and I would hope that Pete Carroll would just completely forget Eddie Goldman exists so we could keep him. Uh, but again, there's, there's not a single player on our team that I would not put in a trade package. There really isn't because you bring in Russell Wilson, like we talked about earlier, that sleeping giant is awake and we can draft a few other playmakers around him. And I agree with you. I don't think there is a single other place now that the Bears were kind of smart. They waited on it. And I think they're going to wait on it more because what I've been seeing is that trade really couldn't happen until after June 1st is what I'm hearing because of the cap hits and everything. If we wait till after June 1st, Russell Wilson, we save a couple million dollars. You know, if we were to trade some big names, we'd save a couple million. Uh, I think we keep waiting. I think the Saints aren't going to do it. The Raiders aren't going to do it. The Broncos don't have any balls to do it. Uh, and I think that we're kind of weirdly in the front runner. And it's, it's weird. It's weird. It, I, I don't know how I feel. Did you just low key call out John Elway for not having balls? Yeah, no, I, I think John Elway is a very, very overrated GM in the NFL. Wow. wow. Very overrated. I think he inherited a great defense and got, got Peyton Manning. Manning and then won a Super Bowl. I think everything else he's done so far there has slowly just dismantled that Broncos team, but that's for another day. Well, with that, going into GM moves, super fast, two-minute section. I think that in regards to moving positions, in regards to the cap and everything, the Bears should load up on picks. We said this earlier. London and I are both on the same page. The Bears need to load up on picks because they have a young and talented enough team with just enough veterans that if they get rid of a veteran or two, they're fine. And if they were to take in younger players with cheaper contracts for the next couple of years, we can really experiment with who's worth it, who's not. So I'm going to say this in one minute. London's got one minute. Here are our top three moves that we want to make. My first one, trade Kyle Fuller and Keem Hips and get into the top 10. I don't want Hicks gone, but like London said earlier, he's older. He's got a big contract. Kyle Fuller also older, has a big contract. They're still in their prime. They're still valuable to teams. Get a top 10 pick for trading both of them. I don't care who it's with, but get that top 10 because now you have two first round picks and Ryan Pace, for the love of God, do not use both of your first round picks and trade up for one more spot. That's it. Number two, Allen Robinson and Russell Wilson trade. I already said it earlier, gives the Seattle 
Seahawks another trade. Uh, that's where London and I are disagreeing. I think that Seattle is going to benefit from having Allen Robinson because what defense is going to stop DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and Allen Robinson? And in, in, in what corner set of corners is going to do it? I mean, that's my opinion. But also, you know, you get Russell Wilson out of it. And third, I hate saying this because I love Jimmy Graham with every ounce of my body, but trade Jimmy Graham and Anthony Miller because you're clearing cap and get one second round pick from whoever doesn't matter where it's preferably in the earlier in the second round, but it saves money and we get young talent and Ryan pace is good in every single round, but the first round. So give him as many rounds after the bears did get two free six round picks from the NFL today. Thank you. Cadell. I appreciate it. I wish they were in the third round, like the Patriots always get, but with that more picks for Ryan pace in the later rounds, the better London three top moves go. Yeah. I'm going to just cut them all down to maybe like one or two. I would say, Anybody that we don't need, um, and I'm sorry about this, Cordell Patterson, love you, cut. Uh, I would say, you know, you're going to want too much money. Anybody that we can keep and trade, like you said, Jimmy G, Anthony Miller, Javon Wims, anybody like that, try to package them together and get as many trades as possible. And I would say the number one goal right now for Ryan Pace and everybody in Hallis Hall should be this. It should be clear up as much cap space as humanly possible, understand that no one is safe at that place and try to get as many later round picks that we can in this draft so that when we do get Russell Wilson, we can A, afford him and B, put some a little bit of young talent around him because we are going to lose some pieces. Uh, that's, that's it. That's absolutely it should be our number one thing. Boom. Lo- that's our takes. That's our GM moves. We're signing up for when Ryan Pace is either retired or fired. It's going to be Beth Rohde, 2022 in Hiles Hall's GMs. We have no idea what we're doing. We are just fans, optimistic fans, looking to do whatever. And London, by the way, a good thing that, that comes with this, and I saw this on Twitter earlier, and I got to agree with it. There's going to be a lot of cheap one-year contracts for superstars this year. Like I'm talking five, six million dollar deals just to get by when the cap gets better for next year. Cause the cap is going to be, I believe they're saying the cap is going to be up to the 210 range. So you're getting 30 million in cap for next year. You can re-sign guys. So. Yeah. Thank God. Because otherwise Ryan Pace will sign Robert Quinn to a huge deal when he's a one year deal, but we won't get into that. Oh wait, he already did it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, with that, thank you very much for listening in to Just a Minute of Your Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde with my co-host, London Beth. Thank you very much for tuning in. And we will be back this upcoming Sunday, hopefully with some Russell Wilson news. Who knows? But we may have an emergency uh, podcast as well if, if something happens. I don't care if it's two, three in the morning. I'm calling London. We're jumping on. It's happening. With that, thank you, Chicago. Thanks for listening in. And we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.